Good morning. So um, today um, I want to start working on the Stimpy Pixie Demon and CLI. Um, so I'll get straight to it. Get the uh, IDE open. So still not absolutely sure on how I'm going to do this. Um, but um, I have been, I did some research last night um, and I think I will be using Dbus um, for the communication uh, between the daemon and the command line interface application I'm going to make and potentially the settings application. And I may even have a, yet another application for the search and replace uh, prompt. Well, that, although that may just be a version of the, the GUI settings. Um, but either way, um, my plan is to bring up a daemon. Um, which will publish uh, some dbus interfaces and methods. And then the CLI and the other apps um, will talk to it using the standard Linux dbus session that a user has whenever they have a desktop. Um, so, but we'll, I'll get into that as, uh, as I go along. Um, I had a little play with some of the examples in this project, um, a go dbus dbus, um, and found that I, I struggled with, um, there's a example of the server, um, where it brings up um, this uh, demo interface, um, which has a um, foo function on it. And it took me a little while to work out how to actually connect to it and use that um, because there wasn't an example that used that kind of communicated with that server. So last night I um, played and eventually worked out how to um, connect to the session bus um, and then create a connection object which used the interface um, at that path. Um, and then um, how to then call it, uh, or call the function on the interface. Um, and so I, in the end, submitted a pull request um, to the function, uh, to the uh, Go Dbus project um, with this little client example. Um, so hopefully other people won't have the little um, struggle that I had in just kind of working out how to actually get it working. Um, I don't think I've actually downloaded that on here yet, actually. So maybe I should. Uh, no, we'll be fine. We'll just get on with it. Um, so that's kind of my first thought is that I need to basically bring up a server very much like this example. Um, there's, this is very obviously example code, um, very basic, um, and it does things in a way that you wouldn't do in a production server daemon. Um, but it is a start. Um, and I will, I think, also be using some of these ideas that I found in this other fun, um, blog post um, a little while ago um, about um, how to demonize your Go programs. Um, this is written by Elijah Eftemoff. Not sure how you would say that second word. Um, but basically, he's, he's, he goes through the steps of creating a 
a daemon um, which uses um, a reasonable structure for making sure that um, you can test it in the end, um, which is important. Um, and he's basing that off of some of the, uh, he, he mentions later on that uh, some of his inspiration is from Matt Ryer's um, blog post about how he puts very little in the main function of his Go um, applications. Uh, it basically puts it all into a run. Um, and where is it here? Yeah, it basically has a run um, application uh, function, um, which takes the arguments that are set up in main. Um, and by doing that, that means that you can pass in your own arguments and your own standard out and so on. Um, uh, which enables you to then um, test it better. Um, so you would pass in your own um, like flags. I mean, you use you use flag set to get the flags from the um, thing up, and then you can pass them in as your args and all that kind of stuff. So. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, looks sensible to me, so I think I'll be basing it off. I did um, have a look at his at Elijah's um, playground, where he's got his observer um, example. Um, it seems to be a little bit out of date um, compared to his um, blog post. There's a few things that aren't quite right. Um, but that's okay. We'll, 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 we'll work with it. Um, it's just an idea. I can't use, um, some of it anyway, um, because I'm not building a, a daemon, which is continuously pulling like an external service, which is what this does. It's just checking to see whether websites up effectively. Um, I don't want to have what have hit what they have here, which is a for loop um doing a, a periodic um grab of an HTM of a, a URL. Don't want to do any of that, so um I can't use the guts here. Um but I can at least kind of set things up in a similar way. Um, like an example of something that's slightly off here is that he passes in standard out, but he never uses it. Yeah, I think he should be using standard out there. Um, but anyway, we'll, um, well, at least can use that. Um, and then another thing that I have to be very careful of with my daemon is that it needs to be able to write to a database, an SQLite database is what we'll be using, um, which you've already seen in the package. Um, it's in the test code, we are basically creating an in-memory SQLite database um, and then running our tests off of that. Um, but I will want to use this um, an XDG, XDG um, environment, um, so which is the is the common um, what well, what's the actual name? XDG based directory specification. Don't know what XDG actually stands for. Probably cross desktop group or something. I don't know. Um, but either way, um, I will want to use um, the data file function. So I'll be importing this for sure. Um, and that basically just creates a uh, the XDG specification gives you user directories um, uh, in a common form. So depending on, it doesn't matter whether you're on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, um, it's a common standard um, that you can use to say, get where, where should I save any application data or where's the, the documents folder or where's this and the other. So um, this is perfect. Yeah, it seems to be um, up to date and well regarded, so um, I will definitely use this. So that's the basics, that's the building blocks. Um, we're going to use Dbus, um, we're going to use XDG, 
um, as the method of finding where we're going to put our database. Um, and then we're going to start, we're going to bring up a, uh, hopefully, <laughs> we're going to bring up a little daemon uh, process, uh, which is basically going to say, hey, here I am. And then we're going to create a, a CLI, which talks to that daemon to do things like get a snippet or add a snippet and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then the theory being that the actual daemon um, will also in the future do the monitoring of um, another uh, DBus um, service, um, which is published by the Accessibility Toolkit in Linux. Um, so when you type a couple of keys and you um, you hit one of your um, snippets, um, abbreviations, uh, the daemon will recognize that um, and replace the, uh, the abbreviation with the body of your snippet um, eventually. So, but that's a little ways off yet. First, we need to get this daemon up and running. Um, so, um, now comes the, uh, the, the problem of naming things, <laughs> which is one of the big problems in computing. Um, so we've got a package directory. Um, we want to now create, um, what usually are called in Go, I think, um, I'm obviously a learner in Go, but, um, a command. Um, so it's going to be eventually a binary. Um, so we are going to create a new directory. We'll call it command. Um, and in here, we're going to have at least three commands. Daemon, CLI, um, and GUI, I think I'll probably call it. Um, so the GUI and CLI, they, they've got obvious names there. Um, Daemon, I think I'll call it Daemon, but I was wondering whether I should actually call it um, server. Wonder if that'd be more recognizable. No, let's stick with Damon. Um, that's what we're. That's what we know it has. So let's do that. Um, and now I need to initialize a module in there. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so. Right, so I guess that is go mod in it. Um, github.com slash snippet pixie snippet pixie command daemon I'm assuming I need um, to do that. We'll see. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, 
files at yes please thank you so we've got our module there um, and now I need to create a new go file um, and in this case it's the main I'll just say that um, and I want to call it package main because it's the uh, initial part of our function. Um, now I'm tempted to cheat here and just get started with that dbus example and then fix it up. Just to make sure it all works. Um, I wonder if that's a good idea. There's a bunch of stuff I don't need though. I don't think, well, I guess I'll find out. I'm hoping I don't need to do this introspection stuff. I think there's other methods of specifying stuff. Right. Okay, so this is a different method to doing it. Interesting. It's a, that's a little bit nicer. Not quite sure what all this stuff means though. Why we have I'll have to have a look at the docs in a sec. So a prop spec is a map. Map of maps. With a, so it's a map with string keys, map values with string keys, which are pointers to props. So here's just, okay. So that's the first map key, second map key, then we have the structure, which is obviously the prop. Okay. Not sure what this change stuff is all about. Uh, let's um, have a look at the package there.
Where's the prop stuff then? Totally missing that. What's uh... Okay. It's part of the export. So it's just an interface. Okay. What which is the given value to be exported as an object on the message D bus like on the message bus. So we got right, okay. So in this case Interesting, why is it doing that? Doing it All right, so we're doing it in two different ways there. Interface export on the connection that Okay. He's doing introspection again, though. Okay. Well, I'm not sure whether it's all very. It's quite esoteric. This uh, debus stuff. It's quite. <laughs> Quite convoluted in its setup, but if this method is certainly nicer than using uh, a lump of XML. See what I'm going to do. I am going to take the example. And take out temporarily all the introspection stuff. See how that goes. Just give it a go. Um, so we connect, panic, so take out the introspection stuff there. So we're only exporting the interface. Don't 
that. Okay. I'll keep I'll keep that coming um Yeah, I'll keep that current spec. Add the, um, the demo code for the moment while I just quickly test this. Need to grab that. Oops. Okay, so that should now be, uh, let's make sure yeah, it goes on fine, thank you. All right, so now it recognizes that. Um, we now have, in theory, a little dbus server which I'm gonna totally change later but I just want to make sure it up, gets up and running um, and now well, let's just see if it works let's see if it actually compiles okay Seems to be working. Um, and now let's create a CLI. Keep that running for the moment. Initialize the module. Uh, come on, CLI. Then we'll take my little demo. Say always on that. You go far. Yep, we'll add that. Okay. Yes, we want that. Thank you. Okay, so we now have a little client that's going to connect to the same session bus, which is your user, your local one, not the machine session bus. Bus. System bus. Um, so this is just for my desktop. It's going to connect to, yeah, it's connected. It's going to create um, an object on the same demo. And then it's going to call the foo function, store the result in the string. Uh, and then it's just going to print it out. So this is a little quick test, okay? So, in theory, 
as long as taking out that introspection stuff hasn't screwed everything up, which it might have. Uh, what now? Oh. It worked. Cool. So we got bar back and um, the server said, hey, I'm going to send bar. Cool. All right. So we don't need to do the introspection stuff, which is quite handy for the moment. Um, because that seems to be a lot of setup I don't need to do. I'd quite like to keep it relatively private for the moment. You can always add introspection later, I guess. All right, so that's good. So we now have the makings um, of a demon and a CLI. Uh, we just need to actually do the right things by them now. So let's kill that. And then that should show that that doesn't work anymore. Yep. Delayed in, not finding a service. Yeah, is the service up? Yep, cool. Right. Okay, let's do sensible things here then. Um. We're not doing introspection, we're not doing that. Um, we're probably not doing any of that either. We'll keep it for the time being. All this has got to come out and be moved. And it certainly needs to change its spec. Um, Yeah, let's do a quick um, let's do a quick change here. Um, what we'll do is we'll change who to be ping. We'll change uh, yeah. We'll also change the the lowercase foo to ping. We will change that so. Oh, yeah, that's going to cause problems. Why is that not working? Uh -huh. I'll change. I really need to sort out my uh, BIM ID config on this since I've reinstalled. Uh, so that's going to be snippet pixie and I'm going to change demo uh, to also be Hmm. 
Do I need to do that? I don't need to add that. Probably I should just take out demo. I only need that. And then the functions are going to be what we actually call. So, right, so we're down to, we're changing it to com github snippet pixie. Which isn't great actually. Don't need it to be github. Although it would be consistent with the package at the moment. Maybe I'll change that. Yeah. Let's get rid of that in here. And I will just call it the daemon service because it's possible that the GUI might will bring up his own dbus entry. In that case, you need something different. So yeah, we'll do that. This can all change anyway. I'm going to keep it all lowercase, but I'm not sure whether that's the, the right thing to do. I wonder if I should actually be... Um, make it not the case but a title case but we will see if it complains it complains so that's got rid of that so we now have um, f ping I wonder why it does that. Okay, it's the type. string
Not sure why it needs to do that. I'll have to look into that. Um, because we'll be doing something quite different. Uh, right, so yeah, so we've got that. Com snippet pixie demon, demon, demon. Okay. And then on the CLI, we need to do the same thing. So it's com snippet pixie dot daemon that we're talking to okay and then here again um snippet pixie Damon. So we're going to open a session bus connection, um, grab the snippet pixie daemon object at the com snippet pixie daemon path. We're then going to call ping. Return the result. Ping. Okay, we don't need my little explanation there. Result from calling. Ping function on comms and the pixie daemon interface and back here because what we really want is pong. Okay. Theory. In theory, that should work. So if I try and connect now, it will not work. Failed to call ping function. The name comms to the demo was not provided by any service files. OK. We run this server. Listening on comms to the demon. Comms to the demon. And now if I run it again, the client get a pong. Cool. Okay. That's a good start. Uh, right. However, I need to do a little bit more than that. So, um, what we're going to do here. So, at the bare minimum, Bare minimum, we need a better setup for the, uh, the startup. So so based on 
the four steps this Elijah mentions. Um, we will be doing some of this. Okay, I think kind of run out of time as always. Um, I wonder if I should. I'm going to start hacking away at it now, um, and I think that's probably a bad idea to just get halfway through when I've actually got something working. So maybe I'll call that a day, um, and then um, we'll start setting it up properly in my next session. I'll probably set it up with a proper run function. Um, with getting flags and setting up connecting to the database yeah okay well at least we've got um, the starts of a daemon and a CLI um, and we've shown that the dbus package works uh, we've got a lot to do there though we've got um, a lot of config to bring up um, I'll definitely have to look at that other method of setting up the exports um, but I think that's it for today um, so um, until next time thank you very much for watching and you take care